Hello everyone, my name is Maxime Chagno. I'm a Katia consultant working for PLM Technology in Norway. Today, we'll perform a live demonstration of the 3D Experience Release 20NX on cloud, and I will do an introduction, a quick introduction of well designed application in Katia 3D Experience. And I would like to mention someone that helped me to do this video. It's Vegar Kobevik from Protex in uh, Olesund. He helped me to, uh, to prepare this video by sending me some material. So thank you very much, Vega. Okay, so before doing the tutorial, I need to tell you that in well design application, you need to import the welding resources file that is located on the 3D Experience uh, installation path. And to help you doing that, I created this video here, two minute tuto, uh, how to import the welding resources. It's very easy to do, but you just need to do it before uh, working with a weld design in Katia. So here it is. I have an assembly composed by three different parts. Uh, the base plate is actually a sheet metal part and the two other are just part design. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a weld bundle in this assembly to create some welding lines and we will move the parts to see how it works. Okay, so I will now switch to weld application, weld design application. It's in the very bottom of the 3D uh, quadrants. I click on weld design and as you can see, I'm, I was in the product level. So there is no problem here. And the first thing you need to do is to create the bundle of welds. You, you have to create this sub product, weld lines. This will appear here on the spec tree. And as you can see here, I have a special type of 3D shape. It's a bead fastener representation. And in there, we will do the welding lines. And you have plenty of different type of weld, uh, but I will mainly use this one here. That is the automatic uh, fillet mode and it works really well. So I will just use that. Uh, Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to select two supports. And of course, since this is located in another part, uh, I have this small message that appears, uh, keep the link with the selected object. And I will say yes. But of course, if you are a bit tired of this panel, you can also remove it in the preferences. I just like to have it to be informed that I'm selecting a part in another context. So I select this one and then you can see that we will have uh, external references here, but it's no problem. We can just hide them after. And I will select this plate here because we will have a weld between these two elements. And then I will also select the limits because we want just to inform the computer or the software that the limit will be here in that case. And also here on the tiny area here. Yes, here it is. Okay, so for the moment it's going to create a simple uh, line. You can just click on preview and it will find the two limits and it will create the line. And then you have five millimeter. I think it's a bit too big. So I'll just put it back to three millimeter. And also I will change by something convex and not flat, convex, and put an offset of one millimeter because here it's still flat and click on preview. And as you can see, it's a bit more roundy. Click on okay and, and here it is. And of course you can hide these uh, surfaces after. I will now create the same here on this area here. Yes, yes. And the two limits, this one here. Yes, and this one here on the corner. Great, and as you can see, preview it will do the same. Click on okay. It's very flat, so we can change, change it afterwards. It's no problem just by uh, clicking on a second fillet, double clicking, and I will just change to this time concave. Then you will have this parabolic shape. So if I put one millimeter as like the other, now it will be the opposite. So it's just to, to show you the tool. Of course, I don't know if this is perfect for this type of part. And I'm going back to the assembly level now, and this is the power of the application. You can just move the part and update the assembly. And that is very really powerful because imagine now that you have a lot of different parts, uh, you can just easily uh, make your design and add the welding lines wherever you want. So it's pretty helpful. And I will finish on this area here 
where as you can see it's a bit different it's flat here or rounded and here as you can see it's a chamfer that i created of course it's maybe not that realistic here uh, but it's just to show you what can do what can we do with the tool so i just go back to my uh to my weld body here where i will do my welding uh bundle and i select again the same tool here uh, selecting this as the support and this as well here and now five i know that five millimeter will be too big so i'm just going to put 2.5 that's actually the size of my chamfer uh, click on preview and as you can see here we have it there you can even put it a bit smaller if you want to and I will just keep it unspecified for the type of manufacturing. Click on OK. As you can see, it's doing the full round. I will just hide the two surfaces. Here it is. And we have a full uh, weld line. And now what we can just do again, as I told you, we can move this uh, tube here and I will put it a bit higher. As you can see on my part, I have made this small uh, hole here and I will just update my design. And here, as you can see, the welding line automatically found that there was a limit here. So this is pretty cool, uh, especially for the people that are doing a lot of uh, weld, uh, but for all type of mechanical engineer, I think it's great for that. And of course now uh, the last point is to maybe insert a drawing Here I am, I have my uh, drafting application here and I can just take one front view of this assembly. This one here. We can already see that we have the welding lines that appears in the preview of the drawing. Here it is. And then I will just do a projection view, maybe like that. Okay, and here I uh, just want to show that uh, you can actually go to annotation and there is a special tool for welding symbol. Uh, it's, I was thinking at the beginning, like here, for example, I select this line here and then you have this uh, panel that appears. And I was thinking at the beginning, why is it not uh, fully automatic? But then I realized that actually there is so many uh, different um, element you can select according to this. So the software cannot know that it's according to the skill of the engineer behind that do the drawing. And I will maybe not select this one, but maybe this one here. So for example, that line here, I'm not a uh, professional on that. I can just say that here it's the full, uh, full contour. And if you have different, uh, code according also to the country you're working on. We know this one is flat. Uh, I think this is this type here or maybe this one, not sure. Uh, mm, yeah, this you need to have a bit of expense, of course, to work with that. Uh, and of course, what I like is you can just always go back, for example, uh, here. We can just measure the perimeter of my circle to know the lens. So if I click on the caliper here, I will just select my edge and going here. And the lens is actually 345. So I can just write it here. Uh, and then there is no different uh, no, there is only one line, so we don't need to write any data here. So of course you need a bit of knowledge according to well, but the tool is here and I think it works really well in uh, the 3D assembly, especially when you start to move the different parts. Uh, and I also recognize that there is some limit uh, in the part as well. So it's really fantastic for that. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and 
please have a look at our website and continue just following us on YouTube. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Goodbye.